Good afternoon, everyone. This is Quinny Clem with Quinny's Book Talk and Reviews, and I am your literary ambassador. And today I have a special guest, and I'm going to let her introduce herself today. Hello, everyone. My name is Jamel Hoskins Knockway, and I'm the author of a bilingual book of poetry. It's a children's book of poetry that translates creatively from Spanish to English within the poems. And I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. All right, now, um, what is your genre and what attracted you to that genre? My genre, actually, because um, I'm a former uh, world language specialist uh, teacher. I sport, taught Spanish high school for many, many years. I've always had a love for the Spanish language ever since I was a child. And uh, I came up with this book because I feel that it's very important for people to know a second language for communicative purposes. And that's why I decided to write this book because when I first started teaching Spanish many years ago, there were no books available, extra books, uh, supplementary materials for students that wanted to learn a second language. And I used to go to the stores. I only had one Spanish book to teach from. And I used to go to the store and say, hey, we need more books in the language so students can perfect their skills. And uh, I think uh, it was just a good idea to uh, start this, uh, to write, write the book. Okay. Now tell us about your book. Well, um, I'll be looking at, here it is right here. It's, as you see, it's very colorful. Mm -hmm. uh, the book is, uh, you know, when you learn a language, you become bilingual and bicultural. So this book uh, really, actually, when you're reading it, uh, you learn about the uh, Spanish language. Uh, and what's so creative about the book is that it translates creatively from Spanish to English within the poems. And it's very, very fun. Kids enjoy it. Uh, I also have a dedication of my father. He was a famous uh, welding contractor. He's deceased now, Kelly's Welding. He owned his own welding company for over 60 years. And then I dedicated to my deceased mom as well. She, uh, Mabel Haskins, who was my, my dear mother, who was deceased now. And uh, and it's, it's fun. and. Uh, as a matter of fact, people that students that speak Spanish can also develop their English skills mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And then um, in the back, as being an educator for many, many years, uh, uh, educator, it has a glossary. It has a glossary in the back and a pronunciation key. Okay. So uh, some people, they're very fearful about learning a language because they don't yes. know where to start. So mm -hmm. I also would like to add that I may also have a part two to this with, uh, with a, a tape to go along with it. I'm working on that now. And also I can speak languages part two. I'm gonna to try to work on that. That would help, whatever. Oh, okay. Can you read us um, an excerpt from your book, please? Oh, sure, certainly. Okay, I, I noticed that most of the students uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing readings, they really like this one. Can you see this? Um, yes, yes, in the classroom. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, it's called In the Classroom. And as you see, it's very multi multicultural. Most classrooms are like this. We have all races in this particular yes. classroom. Of Indians, Hispanic, you know, and uh, so that's where it is. And it's called In the Classroom. Pepito ate a Dorito and drew a guitar. Guitar on the pizarra, the blackboard. Paco ate a taco and gave some to Nesta, who put it in la cesta, the wastebasket. Susana ate a banana and gave it to Rosanna. Senora Dora, Mrs. Dora, la profesora, the teacher, returned to her class and said, Su attention, por favor. Your attention, please. All the students laughed. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. That's one of them. A lot of oh. students really like that one. They love it because it's comical. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when you make it fun, the students are not as fearful to learn a second language. So I always try, when I was teaching Spanish, I always try to make it fun. Do yes. a rap. Make it fun with them. And mm -hmm. they say, hey, I want to learn more. You know, and that's how I learned in a fun way. Okay. That's it. Mm -hmm. What do you love most about writing stories for children? 
the most part is not even so much about the money. Being a writer since I was 13 years old, I had a, that was like my hobby. I think it's just this dissemination of the, the words and to touch the child. And when I give my book signings, when I see a child pick up the book and they're excited and they say, mommy, I want this book. That's the joy. It's not so much about money all the time. I'm not mm -hmm. worrying about that. As long as I can have, make a kid happy because I have a labor, it's a labor of love for me, then I feel that I'm successful, you know, that way. And that's, that's very important to me. Okay, very important. Okay. Where do you get your inspiration from? I get my inspiration from my family members. I come from a, a, a line of uh, educators in my family. Uh, my aunt was a French teacher and a principal. My uncle was a principal and an English teacher. And my sister was an English teacher. She's retired. And my mom wanted to teach. She loved the language. And so I was surrounded by books all my life. And I think my that's what it is, my, my family members. We used to sit around. My mother was a pianist. And we'd play the piano and we'd sing songs, gospel songs. And uh, we we talk about life and politics. So I was like breeded in this. This was in my blood. And today we still sing, dance. You know, we have family gathers and we're singing and dancing and we're talking about certain issues. And we educate the young. That's that's yes. that's what we stress in my family, education. It's very important to educate. Have you always loved stories and reading? Always, always. You know, I'm I'm the baby. My I have three sisters. One is eight years older than me. The next one is ten years older than me, and then my oldest sister is eleven years older. So I kind of grew up sort of by myself, like an only child in a way, because they were much older than me. So I would comfort myself through reading stories, storybooks, and uh, I, I just love books. And uh, even in my house now, I have so many books on every topic you can think about. I'm always reading. It's it just relaxes me. It's mm -hmm. it's it's like it takes me to another world. Like it's like you can tr actually travel. You don't have to physically go to a country, but you can travel by reading. Yes. So in college, college, I double majored in English, English and Spanish. I had a double major. And then in grad school, I, I focused on administration. I got my master's administration and English as a second language. So on top of that, I also teach English as a second language to international students. Oh, okay. Why do you think it is important for children to develop a love of reading? Well, because reading, I feel that it is a, a success. If you can read well, then you can and you can communicate. That can help you to advance and get jobs. And it's very important to be literate to be literate for job purposes and just to be able to enjoy life. Because if you can't read, how can you really travel and, and communicate with other people if you're not literate? And, uh, and, and many times, they're, they're just actually during this pandemic, students are not really able to communicate and get physical with each other and play games. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is a good way you can come home, stay home and you can read your books. That's why I tell my students, always read. Mm -hmm. Because with, when you're reading, you're getting the uh, syntax and you're getting the correct form of the language, the correctness. And if you practice yes. that, and I, I force my students, most of my students I have now are Hispanic students. They come from all of the Hispanic countries, Ecuador and uh, Mexico and uh, España and um, uh, Peru. And they come from there. And uh, they're very excited about learning English because I make it exciting. Fine. Yeah, I say this is, this is, you know, so they're ready to come to class. Yes. What age level is your book? My book is from age level, I would say six to 10. Okay. Mm -hmm. Six to 10, yes. What was your publishing journey like? It was, let me tell you, I wrote this book. My daughter was born in 1993. And I started, I thought about it. I said, I like my daughter to learn a language. I said, well, well, how can I do this? And I said, I'm going to write a book. I had this book and I wrote that book. I thought about her and it was very exciting. Uh, my aunt, before she died, she said, my, she was a French teacher and a principal. She said, you have to get this book out. And uh, it, it was a, a beautiful journey. And the real journey was the finished product when I saw that book in print. Mm -hmm. I said, wow, I made it. But unfortunately, my parents were, de were deceased. And I wish that they could see the book because uh, I know they would probably say, well, you finally did it. So <laughs> it was, but it was like, a, it was, uh, if anything, it was a spiritual journey because I, I really also dedicated to my grandmother and grandfather in North Carolina. 
And I remember the memories of them being down south and we eating sweet potato pie. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I consider myself a, a southerner and a northerner because I have the, the both of the roots. So it was like a very, very, very spiritual. And also in this book is some parts of this book is about my childhood growing up. You know, having lunch and just getting up in the morning. My mom used to say, it's a quarter to eight, Jamel, time to get up. So I wrote a poem about that. So it's not just about the Hispanic culture. It's also mm-hmm. about the American culture. Okay. What avenues do you take to market your book? Well, right now um, I'm working on getting it to Amazon uh, and uh, Barnes and Noble. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, my book is also at Jesus Gift and Bookstore located in Linden, New Jersey. I have a book signing, which will be next week, next Saturday. I have a book signing with them. And uh, so it's in many of the local bookstores, mm-hmm. but uh, I'm definitely working on getting it uh, on Amazon and uh, Barnes and Noble. I've had uh, three uh, book signings at Barnes and Noble and Bank Street uh, Bookstore located in New York City. So I've, I've been traveling a lot with the books and selling very well. Okay. What has been your greatest accomplishment thus far in your literary career? My greatest accomplishment was actually this book, actually, getting it out. I mean, it took so long. Uh, It was published in 2017, and it was just sitting collecting dust. You know, but I've been writing a long, long time. I used to write for Class International Magazine. I used to write. When I was teaching, I also was writing, and it was located out in New York City. Uh, And then... uh, my book was published, Visions. This is a, a, a book, it's a part of a textbook. I worked on a chapter and I wrote a poem in here. So I, I, writing was like, it's just like I said, it's a part of my life. It's right. in my blood, mm-hmm. you know. Um, what has been some of the challenges you face being an author? I would say getting published getting published because I, I wrote a couple of, to a couple of uh, publishing companies and they say, oh, wait till next year. And, you know, you keep getting put off. And then when I went out to Pittsburgh, there was a company that really wanted the book, but that was the, after the book was already out, they wanted to republish it. And I was saying, you know, I don't know if that's a good idea. So that was really like the challenge and the marketing I think is uh, challenging, but I, I don't feel that there's a lot of competition with my book. I really don't because most, uh, language books on one side of the page is in Spanish and the other side is English. But in my book, it's two, two languages combined together okay. creatively. Mm-hmm. It's creatively and then add the rhymes that go with it. So I, I really, based on the books I've, I've researched, this book is very unique. So I, I don't feel really challenged. I, I know it's going to sell. I, I'm confident in the book. Mm-hmm. It actually sells itself, actually. Yes. Yeah. And I have adults that uh, purchase the book and they're actually using it. They're saying, I'm not going to give this book to my kids. I'm not going <laughs> to give it to my kids. I'm going to take this book and I want to learn a little Spanish, too. So I'm like, OK. OK. What projects are you working on right now? Well, right now um, I'm working on part two, the second half of it. I'm looking for a, another illustrator, I'm looking for an illustrator right now. Okay. Where can readers find you and your book? Well, you can contact me at uh, my email address, J-N-N-A-K-W-E-1 at yahoo.com. And it's also located at Jesus Gift and Bookstore, located in Linden, New Jersey. And it's online, Jesus Gift and Bookstore. Mm -hmm. And it will be at other local stores as well and online as well. Is there anything else you would like to add before we close? Uh, also, too, um, there's a, an organization I'm a member of, the Society of Children's Books and Writers and Illustrators, SCBWI. Uh, you can also purchase my book on that website as well. Um, I have it right here. Uh, okay. So uh, I just, you know, I just want to say thank you for interviewing me. Um, I want to say uh You know, I just, to the world, let me have peace and maybe heal the world. And uh, I just, um, I I love children and uh, I just want them to be safe. And I hope that the parents that purchase this book, that they will enjoy it. And um, I'm just, I'm just thankful 
that to God that mm -hmm. I did get a chance to get the book out. I'm really, really happy about that. All right. Well, thank you for coming in today. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much. Thank right. you. Okay. Right. Have a blessed day. You okay, too. Thank you. This is Queenie Clam with Queenie's Book Talk and Reviews. Happy reading. Bye, y'all. Thank you. Bye-bye.